Hi friends, this is Muhammad Jibran and welcome to our C++ tutorials. We have seen so far about the single level inheritance, multiple inheritance and the multiple multi level inheritance. Now in this video, I am going to explain you how to do a program for a hierarchical inheritance. Okay, so now let's open our compiler for that. Now let's write a, a function again our class A this will be again public again I'm going to use some integers say M and N same then public uh, no, sorry no need for this I will say void values to assign the values then in this I'm going to assign the value of M equals 3 and N will be equal to 2 ok so now I need to go for another class class B so when you go for hierarchical you see hierarchical if uh, the, the values in A can be accessed by B and C and D ok so you cannot access the values in B the C cannot access the values written in B but uh, the B can access the values written in C and uh, A and C can return the va access the values in A. So according to that, we will write a program uh, now <coughs> in class B. Then over here we say again public and in public I will say void add. I'm going to add these two numbers. I'm going to add them say c out the sum is equal to m plus n ok now I am I have written this but uh, my class A is not accessible to class B as you all know I have to write this thing public A now your class A is accessible via class B now again I need class C to use the values in the class A ok class C will also use the values in A now for that we will again say public void multi now this multi will multiply the values of M and N sum is mm, let me get it down m plus n fine close your class now in your main function now as you can see you have two different classes b and c you are not going with this class if you want you can do another class and you can go for that also but for this example we are using only two examples only that is b and c so you have to create an object for class B as, as well as class C ok because you cannot use the properties of B and C using an object for one class so first we will create an object for B say obj1 then the object for C will be obj2 ok so now I will say object dot object b dot values to assign the values for the object one which is not b it should be obj1 ok now again I will say obj1 dot multi to multiply them then second one the second object obj2 dot values to assign them the values then I will say obj2 dot add to add the values now let's see h to end your program see the object of class b will have these two functions accessible to it that is values and multi how values are in a that is public to b and uh, uh, oops 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 okay B class has the add 
B class has add not multiply. Sorry, that's a big mistake. Add now this will be multi. Fine. Now your object one can access two functions that is the acquiring the values and adding them. As you can see, see object B has the uh, function that is add. Then in second function that is the second object that is obj2 which is the object of class C can do these two things values again and multiply how because A is public to class C again so the function written in class A that is values can be accessed by object 2 and afterwards multi is as you as you can know is it's written in C it is also accessible to object 2 so now let's run it See the sum is 25. So what are the values? Let me show you again. M is equal to 3 and N is equal to 2. Okay. The sum is 5. 2 plus 3 is 5. Sum is 5. Oh, something went wrong. Oops. We did not multiply. See the sum again. We wrote the same thing both the sides. The just say m into n the m into n is this and uh, here. fine now run it again uh, what now run again see now fine uh, go back to the values right. the sum is the 5 the m into n is 6 3 to the 6 so we have used the values in class A and we have accessed them in the class B and class C. So now if you want you can make this function dynamic. Please always do try to do make uh, make things more much more dynamic because nothing goes like this in the real world. Everything is dynamic. So how you can do it? If you want you can stop it the stop the program over here but uh, if you are interested to learn more then what you can do is you can declare two more integers over here say int a and b and then you can take the values from the user pass it down to these values and change the values of m and n then your program will become dynamic please have uh, you should always try to do different programs and try to learn as soon as possible and as different things as you can because it's very important to learn this language in depth so i hope you understood the program and thanks for watching the video